Right, so as always, if you enjoy this video, then please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel to see more content just like this in the future. Um, so today is the sixth day of the semester, technically, because um, I didn't have class yesterday because it was Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so today would be the sixth, sixth day of the semester, technically. So today, um, so today, so since I'm staying at my, um, since I'm staying at my sister's and watching her dogs for her, it's still about an hour drive to get to my university. Um, and so I park in the same place, drive the same distance. I didn't wake up as early this, this time. And so I didn't get to, I didn't actually get to have breakfast this morning, but that's fine. So everything's okay. And then, Lucky. He keeps licking himself. Um, and then, um, so yeah, got the park in the same parking spot, walked to class like normal. Um, since my stage management class is bigger than we've, than my professor was expecting, we actually had to change classrooms to accommodate for all the, all the people that we have in the class. So exciting slash not exciting because the classroom that we were in is way nicer than the one that we're in now, but then the, the, the this new one that we're in is more of like an old school traditional style classroom with wooden desks <laughs> and i mean it has a smart board in it which is it does which smart boards don't feel old school but man i don't i don't know the last time i saw a professor use a smart board now they actually probably the last time i had a professor who actually used a smart board was when i was a sophomore in high school it's the last time i remember it and so um and so today in stage management, we learned, or we talked about, the lecture today was about um, safety, safety and precautions. So he was telling us about, so he started out by saying, safety, safety does not happen by accident. And so what he meant by that was, you have to try and be safe. You have to do all these things and have all these plans ready in case, in case something dangerous does happen, that way you can stay, you and all of your company can stay safe from this thing. And we've talked about also all the major ones are fire, you know, tornadoes slash hurricanes, um, earthquakes, power outages. And now a new one that we're having to think about more and more is active shooter situations, which is obviously and all, all five of those things are not just something that affects the theater, but they're something that affects, you know, the whole world. Um, but to think about it from a theater perspective, he was thinking about what are some things he wanted us to think about. What are some things that you have to consider? What are some things you have to consider when it comes to safety during a performance or during a rehearsal? And um, the two that I immediately thought of was um, emergency contacts. So if somebody gets sick, if somebody gets injured in the middle of a rehearsal production, you have to know who to call. And, you know, that. So, like, emergency contact for the person. They might have multiple. And then, of course, 911. Um, and then beyond that, um, the, the next one I thought of was where are the exits to the theater? In case a fire breaks out and we have to evacuate, how do we get everyone out of the theater as quickly and as safely as possible? And he was telling us about how um, – I think he was – he was telling us about how Nearly every single theater that you go into nowadays, all of their doors open outward. That's because of an incident that happened at this place called the Iroquois Theater where a fire broke out and people tried to run out of the theater. But the doors were pull doors from the inside. You had to pull from the inside to get out. And so many people were packed in the lobby that they couldn't get the front doors open. And that's how people ended up getting trampled. And that's how people ended up getting killed by the fire. And so now... Now the standard, now the gold standard is all theater doors, all theater entrance doors open outward from the inside to keep that from happening ever again. So it seems inconvenient whenever you first go to the theater and you have to pull the door outward to you to go inside, but it's a safety thing. It's for safety reasons to keep, to keep what happened at the Iroquois Theater from ever happening again. So... Let's see. Let's see if I can remember what else we talked about. Some other things that we talked about are 
Let's see. Um, he was telling us about, so nearly every theater that you're going to go into has some form of fire protection that's installed within the stage itself. So the one at my university, we have a fire curtain. It's a manual fire curtain where it's on over on stage right side. There's this big ring that's attached to like this little thing that sticks out of the wall and has a wire that goes all the way up to the ceiling. You pull the ring off of this bar and it flies up into the air and it lowers what's called the fire curtain, which the fire curtain is just installed directly into the walls of the theater. And so what it does is that the fire curtain drops really fast. And what it, it does exactly what do you think it does? It prevents fire from either... So, okay, so the example is, the example that I was taught is that if a fire breaks out on stage and we can't control it, the first thing we have to do is we have to keep the fire from getting to the audience. That's the moment that you drop the fire curtain and you start to evacuate everybody from the audience, as well as, you know, you begin to try to put out the fire. That's when, that's when your stage managers, your stage management team, and whoever other safety staff are would try to put out the fire in the middle of the production. <laughs> um, that's why you have to know where your fire extinguishers are at all times. <coughs> Gosh, my throat really hurts today. Or it just feels really dry today. Um, beyond that, yeah, so, and so, um, <coughs> yeah, so a fire curtain drops and it's made of fire, re fire resistant material so that it can't catch on fire. Um, and so, yeah, the fire curtain does two things. One, it makes us that the fire can't get past, but it also, too, it comes down so quickly that it creates an air current that blocks all the air from the fire, keeping the fire in one spot instead of pulling the fire through. And so all that combined together allows the audience to typically have enough time to get out of the theater. And it also keeps the fire from spreading while it's on stage. So that... Um, Stage management and safety personnel can put the fire out. The same goes for vice versa. If a fire breaks out in the audience somehow, you can still drop the fire curtain. It keeps everyone on stage safe while you then, you know, have safety personnel come in and, um, well, you have safety personnel come in and try to put out the fire. And you, or if you call 911, you call the firemen, and, you know, they, they would put out the fire. We'd figure out how it happened, why it happened, and then we would take whatever precautions necessary to make sure it never happened again. <sighs> Um, we were talking about how, um, our theater has a, has a fire alarm that works on a heat sensor. If it gets too hot near the fire alarm, the fire alarm will go off, which usually means fire. Um, he was telling us about how one of the things that's not so nice is that a lot of theaters use, um, a particle sensing fire alarm. So if they detect smoke or dust, and a heavy excess in the atmosphere, the alarm will sound, meaning that there's probably a fire nearby. The only problem with that is um, one of the methods that you can use in theater is, of course, fog machines and smoke machines to create atmosphere on stage. The problem is these smoke machines and fog machines, they trigger those fire alarms. And the only way you can get them to not trigger the fire alarms is by turning the fire alarms off, which is a horrible idea. He was telling us that the only way you could ever get permission to turn the fire alarms off for the sake of using a fog machine for a show is you have to pay a fireman to sit next to to sit next to the to the fire alarm and turn it back on in case he thinks that there's a fire that could be about to be started so that they can alert the local the local fire station it was just you know and so at the time i thought it was kind of funny and stupid i was just like well you know okay yeah particle sensing fire alarms could be really nice because they can sense, you know, they can probably sense a fire before the fire has actually started and prevent the fire from actually starting. But then we, we people love to use fog machines and smoke machines. And so it just kind of doesn't work. So that's why I guess a heat sensor is probably the superior one out of the two, but a lot more theaters nowadays have particle detectors than they do heat detectors. And so I don't know. I'm not a professional when it comes to that. Um, he told us that depending on the depending on the type of thing that happens will determine what you have to tell the audience and the cast members. So he was telling us that if it's just a regular power outage, you would tell everyone to stop what they're doing and calmly remain seated. You tell all the actors to come off stage while the technical people try to get the power back on, which is not a very high threat thing. As long as people stay sitting down, 
and don't try to get up and move in the pitch black darkness. Everything should be fine. Um, he was telling us that um, in the event of an earthquake, especially if it's a bad one, you got to get everybody outside. You got to get everybody outside of the building because obviously nothing can fall on you if you're outside and away from any nearby buildings. And of course, that can, and so like he was telling us that um, buildings and theater buildings in California, because California gets a shit ton of earthquakes all the time. Um, those buildings are specially designed to withstand the strongest earthquakes to keep things from falling on people whenever they go back inside. Because, I mean, because he was telling us how annoying it might be for earthquake happens in the middle of a show. Everyone gets taken out. Um, depending on how, how deep you are in the show, you might come back in and continue performing. The only problem with that is that, um... The lights above your head as an actor or anything else that might be flying up in the fly system probably is not in the same spot and might not be as sound of a connection as it might have. And so something could fall on you after the earthquake has happened or maybe even during an aftershock. And so depending on the severity of the earthquake, they might have to do like equipment checks in the fly system before the show can be restarted, which means that, you know, you might have to wait a whole hour to find out what the ending of the show is going to be. All because, you know, an earthquake happened. And so that's why here, where we, where I live, um, we don't get very many earthquakes. And even the ones we get are really small and really short. So we really don't have to worry about that. But in places like California, where the earthquakes, where the earthquakes are regularly up in the higher numbers and they last for a while and they freaking create big ass cracks in the ground. Yeah, those buildings have to be strong enough to withstand that kind of thing. Um, here in the Midwest, though, we got tornadoes. So, and the worst part is that springtime is always when we have our musicals, which is always when, we, which is always when ticket prices are most expensive. And it's also when we have the most people coming to watch the shows because everybody loves musicals. The only problem is that springtime is also tornado season. And so we have the, we have huge, we have freaking huge, um, tornado shelters. My entire building that my entire department is that has a giant monsters underground. Our main stage theater can seat 550 patrons. And we can fit all that many people at least down in the basement underneath in case a tornado comes. The only problem is that one thing he was telling us is that you have to... Lucky, stop looking at yourself. <laughs> one thing is that you have to... One, 550 people, assuming it's a full house... Because if because he, he said that's if we sold out every seat. Um, there are only three ways to get down into the basement. Um, one is up to stage right, out a door through our green room and down the stairs. Um, another is go to stage left. There's a door in the very back center of the theater that leads down, and then there's also one that's outside of the theater, down the classroom hallway, over by where the music department used to be. That takes you downstairs. Um, 550 people in a sort of a panicked state trying to go down three small sets of stairs while a tornado is either on its way or already ripping through the building is not a very fun situation for anybody to have to be in. And stage managers have to remain calm and cool the whole time through that to keep from making things worse than they might be. And so, you know, luckily our... So luckily our... Um, our basement is big enough to hold all those people, but the big, but the big challenge is getting all those people down there and hell, by the time we get all those people down there, I mean, you know, maybe the tornado is probably already passed, assuming it hasn't destroyed the building. And so it's not a very, it's not a very fun thing to talk about. And so, and then the final most difficult and most important maybe is how, how as a stage manager, how do you prepare for an active shooter? I mean, even our professor, who has been a stage manager many times before, didn't really have a definitive answer because it's just not, it's not easy. It's difficult to think about. I mean, if it was me, the first thing I would do is I have to identify where the shooter is. If the shooter was outside of the building, great. We lock the doors, we call 911, we make as little bit of noise as possible so that he doesn't know that we're there. If the shooter is inside of the theater and may, like maybe they're one of the audience members and they're in the very center 
and they just stand up AK loaded and they start spraying at the stage. I mean, it's horrifying to think about, but it's, it's, I would be hard pressed to think that somebody, it doesn't get tagged with a bullet or something like that. And of course he'd be that, that the shooter would be surrounded by other people in the audience who could easily restrain that person. And maybe somebody take the gun away. I mean, we have a lot of people who are nowadays, especially we have a lot of people who are trained in self-defense, a lot of people who know how to use guns very well, especially living in the Midwest where almost everybody owns a gun and knows how to use one, which is good and bad, I guess. Um, and then beyond that, you know, locate the shooter. You know, if, if, if they're in the center of the crowd and there are other people around them who can restrain them, then that's probably a good thing. We call 911 and we just keep them restrained for as long as we can. If, say, they're in, like, the back of the theater and, like, they hide away and people run away from them, I mean, it's just, I mean, I just, yeah, I don't even know, like, I, this is the kind of thing that takes a really heavily thought out long answer to think about. But, yeah, so. So today, yeah, today in stage one was all about safety precautions that you might have to take. And he was telling us, so the biggest thing that he told us is that you have to prepare for all of these things no matter what show you're in, no matter which theater you're performing in, and this and that, and um, and so yeah, so one of the things he told us is that you should always know where all the exits are. You should always have a plan for every possible emergency scenario, and you, you and you, all of your stage manager team should all know what sh what's supposed to happen if this thing breaks out. Mm. And so, and so that's how it is. So yeah, but it was a fun day in stage management. And so, and that, that was History of American Film. History of American Film was online today, so I kind of checked out pretty hard during that class, so I don't really remember anything. But that was the sixth day of the semester. So if you all enjoyed this video, then please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel to see more content just like this in the future. Uh, thank you all for watching. Until next time, bye!